Hello there. Well, it is a happy Sunday because it's beautifully sunny, but it's blowing a gale. How do I know that? I've just been to Cleavis. I am so chuffed with my little self. I've been to a new shop that's opened up in Cleavis and it's called Mill Stores. It's where the old Bill Co used to be. And uh, I'll show you the boring things I bought first. <laughs> Licorice toppies. They were £1.89. I'm doing a sheet lady. £1.89. I like them though. And I've got three new tea towels. They were £1.99 each. But if you bought three, they were three for £5. So I guess we bought three. Mm. <laughs> nice ones, aren't they? They're sort of like... Well, they feel like, you know, the old glass cloths, the linen type. I do like a nice, clean looking tea towel, I must admit. I'm not a lover of gungy, grey looking, horrible tea towels, so that's what I bought. Right. You know it's going to rain. Because I bought myself a bucket hat. Yeah, I can turn it up at the top. Look like I'm um, on board the lifeboat, is it? Or the sea <laughs> fisherman, yeah? Yeah. So it's kind of a sun hat, but it's not really a sun hat. It's an all weather hat. I could wear a black scarf tied under my chin if I wanted to keep the ears warm, couldn't I? You know, be a bit like the old fashioned movie stars. Anyway, this one was £7.49. I dare say I maybe could have found one a bit cheaper. But I quite liked it. It's black with beige lining. So that was bargain. I thought it was bargain even though it wasn't reduced. This, I'm over the moon with this. It's Jessica Graff designed in Ireland. Full price, 59 pounds, no, 54 pounds 99p. Guess how much I paid for it. In a proper shop, not a charity shop. Proper shop. Look at that, broderie anglais. And it's full length. It's got broderie anglais at the bottom. Ten pounds. I thought it said 16. But when I looked at my bill, it's ten pound. And when I've looked at it again, it's a, it is ten pound. If I'd have known that, I would have bought the pale blue one and the bright pink one. Not that I had a spare £20, but you know, I would have found it from somewhere. And look at that. Just so thrilled with it. I will have to wear a slip underneath it because it's not... Well, it is kind of lined, but it's, uh, you know, where the holes are. I do have a white slip, so I will wear that. It has got a little teeny mark on it, but... I'm that kind of person that the first time I wear white, I will probably have more than a teeny mark on it. I think actually the marks on the underslip, to be honest with you. But at first wash, I can spray it with some stuff and get rid of it. It's just a little pink mark. Oh, in actual fact, it's a little sticker. So it doesn't have a little pink mark on it. Oh, that's what they've drawn attention to. There's a pull thread. Yeah, like, really? You're marking it down from £54.99 to £10 because of a pull thread? I'll take it any day. That's a bargain. I feel like getting on my scooter. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. They had bright pink and they had a pale blue in the same skirt. Oh, they're still there on Wednesday. Which they won't be. But if they're stuck there on Wednesday, I'll be in there. Like a shot. The dress I bought is, again, the same lady. Made in Ireland. It's not kind of my colours. But it was marked down again from £54.99 down to £15. It's full length. Full length. I will put it with that 
necklace if you can see it. I've got a necklace that was a Marks and Spencers. Very expensive one but I didn't pay for very much. I got it from eBay. But that goes with it. And actually, I looked at my stack of cardigans. And I can either wear it with this colour, which I made from a cone, if you remember back, way back when. Once again, my pattern. In the head, nobody's pattern. Mine. Yeah? I've got some more cones, actually. I need to use them up. Because this fine cardigan would be nice if we ever get a summer. Mm. So it does go quite nicely with the dress. Or, if I wanted to be bolder for a different look, this one was made with, uh, again, my own pattern out the head. This one was made with uh, Boho Spirit because somebody said they didn't know they did plain colours, which obviously they do. But this is a lovely dusty pink, which again is the same colours in the dusty pink in the dress. So I am really chuffed with my bargain. They did have another dress, but I had to talk myself out of it. I thought, no, 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 you haven't won the lottery, Janet. Don't be silly. You do not have that kind of money in your purse. Well, in the bank, because there used to be cards. Anyway, what have I been doing? I finished off the sweater for my friend. I need to post it tomorrow, so I thought I'd show it to you. The pictures are on Instagram and Facebook. It's the same sweater I made for myself, but a smaller size, which is why I cannot put it on mannequin, because mannequin is about a 14. This is... 10, size 10, something like that. So, it's going to be posted tomorrow when I pack it up. Because I go to a knit club on a Monday, so I go, well, I don't go past the post office. I can divert and go past the post office. So, because it was a 200 gram ball of James C. Brett marble that I used for the contrast, I had a bit left over. So, I won't show you my San Andreas fault, as Zizi calls it. I made a hat, just a plain hat, with the leftover, well it was about 100 grams I had left over actually. So I've got a little bit left, I've got a few yards left. You could wear it as a slouchy I suppose if you wanted to, or you had a bigger head because it's very stretchy. Um, so I'm going to put that in with the, the sweater because I'll be charging it for the full amount of the wool well, yarn, whatever you want to call it, that I bought, so she can have the hat as a freebie. <laughs> so what am I doing now, you might say? Well, I went into the shed. I did do a little bit of tidying. Not an awful lot, because I got waylaid by patterns. I always get waylaid by patterns. I start off doing things and get waylaid. I don't know whether you do or not. You start off going in your stash. Right, I'm going to tidy up. Right, I'm in the mood. I'm going to tidy, tidy, tidy. So you tidy one little section. And then you get distracted, which I did by my patterns. Anyway, I also got distracted by finding ten balls of Serdar Mercerized Cotton Double Knitting in white. It's on a little cardboard thingy in the middle. Yeah. So while I was on my live yesterday, I thought, hmm, I'll start. I have this in blue somewhere in my jumpers. Not in the ones I'm going to sell, in the ones that are mine. Can't find it anywhere. Can't find it. It's got to be tucked at the bottom of the wardrobe or stuff somewhere because I know I haven't sold it or got rid of it. Because I know it was a bit small, but I think I kept it. You can actually still... This pattern came out of one of those magazine-y things, you know, that you bought every month and you got it in instalments and you were supposed to buy a folder, weren't you, and put them all in. I can't remember what the whole thing was called, but I only bought it for a few months and got bored because most of it was knitting, there was hardly any crochet in it. And it had a lot of toys in it and things like that. But I kept this page out of it, but I noticed it is on Etsy for sale, so somebody's still got it, yeah. And it's supposed to be in Hayfield Raw Cotton. Well, I'm using next best thing, and I'm using Serdar Cotton. So I'm doing it in white. They call it a diamond stitch, but I call it like a more of a... Oh, my hook gone weird. Um, 
always in. I call it more of a crosshatch stitch. I've done the back, but I'm going to have to wash it because right across the middle of the back, as I got to the end of one ball, I don't know whether the cardboard inside with it being brown went onto the yarn, but I've got a great big brown stain which I'm sure will wash out when it's done. Anyway, it's like a crosshatch stitch. I'm not very keen on the way they tell me to do the armhole shaping, but I'm sure I can sew it in as I go along, yeah. So I've got this dark mark right across the middle of the back, which I'm hoping if I spray it with some stain reducing stuff, it will come out. Once again, it's a shorty. I couldn't go any larger because I've only got 10 balls. And I've had it so long, you know it's not going to be around. And in any case, if you buy white or black, the dye a lot, you don't get it the same. It's always a completely different colour, even though it's white. So I would have more than a brown stain going across the middle of it. I would have a completely different colour of white. So it starts off narrow and then it increases up to the bottom. So even though the pattern is vintage and it is not my size, smaller than my size, it is actually working up to be my size. But once again, it's another short one. Oh, I've got another dark mark in it. It must be when it gets to the cardboard, I think. It's cotton anyway, so I can do a hot wash on it. It says hand wash, but we don't take any notice of that. When it's cotton, do we? We put it in a hot wash. I'm sure it'll whiten up. So I started the, the first front. See, I was crocheting it when I was on. I was going to sneeze, I was going to sneeze. <coughs> oh dear. Um, <coughs> bless me. <coughs> oh dear, what's brought that on? So I'm on the first front. Once again, you see you're increasing up the side. I've got some gorgeous white buttons in the shed. The fancy with like an edging, gold edging now. As I say, I was doing this on the live, which was the electric light, so I didn't notice all these. Well, I won't call them brown bits, they're just sort of discoloured. But it's got a cardboard insert in the middle, and I think the cardboard's kind of leached, the colour's leached onto the white. But I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll all be right on the night. Yeah, well, I went into Aldi. It was very good didn't look at any of their wool. I didn't see any actually, but I didn't look. So I treated myself to some Foxy's Fabulous Milk Chocolate Cookies, which I should not be eating, along with the um, licorice toffees, so I'm eating them. But hey ho, it's got a hundred and so many calories in each one, I think. Each cookie got 130 calories. So I definitely shouldn't be eating them as I have put weight on. As you know, I can't get my injections at the present minute. They don't make me lose weight. I've said this before, but they help me to maintain. While I'm taking my weekly injections, I'm not all proven free. I'm not jabbing myself every day. While I'm taking my weekly injection, my weight stays the same. It's not that you can eat anything you want, you can't. It's a misnomer that, you know, these people who think, oh, I can jab myself with it and I can stuff my face like crazy and I won't put, I'll won't lose weight. No, you don't. But with me, it helps me to maintain a level balance if I am good with what I'm eating. But I'm going through a period of stress or whatever. That's why I am crocheting like the wind, I'm knitting like the wind. It's the way I deal with any kind of stress that's in my life is I'll knit like heck, I'll read like mad, but at the moment I'm not reading, or I'll crochet like mad, or I'll eat. At the moment I'm going through a bit of everything. I'm crocheting, I'm knitting, and I'm eating. So, not very good. And I also bought the wrong... Oh, I just spilled, spilled my drink on my plastic bag. I also bought the wrong Fanta. I bought the full fat instead of buying the calorie. Brain's not with it at all. So I'm drinking sugar. No, Janet, you shouldn't be doing that. 
So, yeah, so I've spilled that all over the back now. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with my little lot today. I probably won't be when I look at the bank statement when it, <laughs> it comes in and it's got... Mm -hmm. I've also managed to find, I think I mentioned yesterday, I know everybody has their favourite hooks. With me, it's Susan Bates inline hooks. Can't work with anything with a blob on the end. Couldn't find my 450 hook anywhere. I ordered, in fact, I've ordered two now, but they come from America. So they take forever to arrive. So they're not due to arrive till the middle to the end of June. But I can't get the ones with the bamboo handle. I can only get the ones with the squashy handle, but I'll have to do. So I ordered two more hooks. I sound like I'm all after the big spenders, don't I? Cheap hooks. I ordered two more hooks from Amazon because I couldn't find a 450. I knew I only had one, but I couldn't find it. And um, the ones that arrived, I couldn't use them. I just couldn't. I don't know why they just drag. You all have your favourite hooks. I'm not advocating that everybody uses this hook. By no means am I saying that you should. You've all got your favourite hooks and you get used to the way they pull. I can crochet really quickly with these. Whereas I can't when it's got what I call a blob end. In line, if you can see. Oh, you can't see very well. It goes right up. Whereas the other ones haven't. It's got like a pointy bit, whereas the others have got more of a blob. Anyway, the one I bought, I think I bought a Knit Pro. I actually gave it to Sarah, my friend from Knit Club, because she could use them. And I thought, I am not adding to my collection of useless hooks that I can't, I can't use. Uh, I've got quite a few in the shed that I can't use. I mean, some I did buy, the cheapy ones I did buy when I used to do uh, crochet lessons. But I soon gave that up. Oh, I discovered I do not have the patience. And sadly, I had one of my very, very faithful ladies who came every week to Nick Club. Every week she came to learn to crochet. And I think she either had early dementia or Alzheimer's. Because every week she'd forgotten how to do the chain. And everybody else in the class was getting annoyed because she would not let me teach anything to the other people in the class. She's like, no, but just show me again, just show me again. And everybody in the class was going, oh, for goodness sake, you know. But people were so polite, they wouldn't say, just do. And she goes, I forget when I get home and I'm trying to say to her, look on YouTube, do, you know. I try not to lose my temper with her, but, you know, you could feel, I could feel the tension rising. And I thought, this is not your forte, Janet, teaching people how to crochet. It's not your thing at all. So this is why I don't do, well, you know why I don't do tutorials. I've told you that before. I don't use a pattern half of the time. <clears throat> I don't have the right equipment. I don't have the right lighting. I don't have the right camera. And to be quite frank, I don't have the kind of money to go out and spend, you know, the right kind of camera. You have to have a, a gantry so it's like, you know, it hangs down above. I mean, I did buy this for my mobile phone, but... It just, uh, I just don't know, it just doesn't work for me. You can sort of turn it over like that, but then I would be here somewhere, and my phone would be there. It'd be like close-up blurred, you know? So that wouldn't have worked, you know? I suppose I could have put it up on something and then, oh, but too much like hard work and I'm a lazy bee. I'll hold my hand up, I'm a lazy bee. And in any case, I don't like using my phone. My phone's old. Well, it's not old, per se, to me. It's probably about two or three years old, but it's old-fashioned. It's not one of those singing, dancing ones that you can, you know, pay a bill with. You've got online banking. You can read them little square things. No, my phone's not one of those. In fact, it's just going zip, zip at me because I've... Um, turn the sound off because I thought you got fed up with it came and you're going diddly ding diddly ding diddly. so anyway I put a picture of this dress it's on Instagram it's on the Facebook page 
Yeah, I did actually go into the shed because I was going to find just a couple of things and I thought, well, I'll start showing just a couple of things that I've got in the shed for sale. I won't bombard people. And I thought I'd just pick two things and say, you know, these are what I've got for sale at the moment. They are so much. Postage in the UK will probably be about four pounds. Postage to the US will be astronomical. So I don't expect anybody in the US to buy anything from me here. Unless it's something tiny. <laughs> I mean, I don't do too badly with the... I've forgotten where I put the crochet hook now. These crochet hooks come from America. So I do have to pay about seven pounds, I think, for postage. But, you know, they will go in like an envelope, won't they? They're not that bulky. But obviously anything like that that weighs heavy. You know, you're talking, every time I go to the post office, they seem to say £30. You know, it doesn't matter how heavy it is, how light it is, they seem to say £30. And I'm like, is that the lowest price that you do to send things to America? I feel like going in with a hat or something, you know, something lightweight and say, putting it in a bag, you know, no name or address or anything, and say, will you just weigh this and just tell me? how much it is to go because I look online at the post office charges and it tells me one price and then I go to the I tell my customer such a price go to the post office and it's always more I don't know why how it changes from the online it might say it'll cost you 16 pound it might say online and I go in the post office a little bit oh it's 20 25 and I'm like I've just told her £16. So it means that, you know, any little profit I might have made by making something for somebody, it's gone kind of in the postage, you know. And I think I've told you before why I don't use Etsy. It's because Etsy add everything together. So if it's £25, £30 for the postage and it's £30 for the sweater, they charge me commission on the £60. They didn't used to, didn't used to, but this new guy who took over Etsy, grabby, grabby, grabby. You know, that's not profit, is it? Postal charges are not profit to the maker. They are something that is maybe profit to the post office, but it's not profit to the little person who sat crocheting, knitting, sewing, whatever they've done. So I don't see why he should charge me commission on my £60 instead of 30 They didn't used to. They didn't used to include postage in. But then they started being crafty by saying, oh, you need to say it's postage free. Obviously, you can't do that, can you? Unless you're posting a greetings card, something that's cost pennies to send. You cannot advertise anything that's being post free. You've got to add it to the cost of your thing that you're selling. So instead of my sweater being £30, I have to advertise it at £60. Which means I can't compete with people in the US who would pay £30 for that sweater plus maybe a few pounds for postage. They don't want to pay £30 for my sweater and £30 for the postage. They don't want to pay £60 for it, you know. And out of that £60, Etsy takes the percentage out of the 60 which leaves me with... In fact, they made more profit than I did for making the flipping thing. So I just thought to myself, you know, hang on a minute. Why should I give them any little profit that I'm making? Why should I be the one who's suffering? I mean, I've read article after article, I've watched YouTube after YouTube of people saying exactly the same thing as me. And yet people still use Etsy to sell. I don't know how they do it. All I can think of is the majority of people must either US sellers sell into US buyers or UK people sell into UK buyers. I mean, I did start putting on when I did before I drifted it all together off, I did start saying UK buyers only. Because I had to. I had to. There was no way I could do it otherwise. 
And then I get people from America saying, why? Why are you not selling to us in America? Why? And I was spending ages sending emails out saying, I'm not doing it, you know. And then if you say anything in the messages, in the comments in Etsy about Etsy, whack, they can actually take your shop off. Or they don't like your message. You know, the algorithm picks up that you said something horrible about Etsy and you're gone. Bye, you're gone. So, hmm. so I'm still looking for a way to sell. Ah, I'm useless. I can't do my own web page. I'm pretty useless. I was considering looking at Kofi. You know, K-O-F-R-A, Kofi. Don't know whether that would sell. Some people have said crap. Say, is it called Craftsy? But that's basically a UK selling site anyway. I don't know. Either way, I'm thinking of just putting two things <laughs> each video on here. Say, this is what I'm selling this week or today. If you are interested, and I'll tell you what size they are. I'll tell you how much they are. And I'll tell you how much the postage will be in the UK. You are in the US and you're brave enough to pay the extra postage, you can message me. But sadly, I can do nothing about how much the postage is going to cost. So that's me having a little rant and a little whinge again. And I was so happy today with my bargains, with my frock. It is fully lined, by the way, even though it's very, very flimsy. And I will probably perish wearing it in this weather. One weatherman says we're going to have a heat wave. Another one weatherman says we're going to have a snow bomb. Whatever one of those is. So, I'd have to put my tights on. Or one of the latest fashions I saw was people wearing a skirt over trousers. And I thought, mm, that's not me. Tights. You know, well, leggings. Because you know me, I don't go out in leggings anyway. But I do have several pairs of leggings that I wear underneath something like this. I've even got white leggings that I could wear underneath the white skirt. Plus I've got a white underslip as well. You know, one of those three tier that will give the skirt a bit more flounce and bounce. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's 1st of June, is it today? Or is it the 2nd of June? It's something of June anyway. It should be summer. We shouldn't, I haven't even got the summer dresses out of the wardrobe yet. They're in the top of the wardrobe, packed away. I'm still in the winter ones, you know, the winter long sleeve dresses. I'm still in the cardigan. It's ridiculous. It's summer. Somebody should tell the weather. A little old guy was laughing at me because I put my ear muffs on. I was nearly being blown away on the sea from and I'm there with my ice cream, because I thought, I'm having an ice cream. It's June, I'm having an ice cream. So I had my ice cream call it, but I had to stop out of the wind and put my earmuffs on. And this little guy who's battering his way through the wind says, I don't blame you, darling. He said, I don't blame me. He said, it's blinking windy, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> anyway, happy Sunday to you all, and bye for now. And hopefully, I will show you something different when I come back later in the week. Bye now.